What do you know about these memory stones? Farhad asked. Better I show you, Anahita said. With great trepidation, Farhad took his pickaxe to Mount Bistoon once again. understanding. Returning to the Revelations realm brought a lump on his throat. Dread shuddered down his spine. We shouldn't be here, he said. The Deve, Bistoon, it will... It cannot hurt us, Anahita interrupted. Trust me. Anahita was right. Bistoon pounded against the red mist, but could not force its way through. Anahita became animated. I have found the key to the memory stone, she said. She told Farhad that a single word was engraved on it, only visible in the Revelation Realm's strange light. Oblivion. What does that mean? Farhad asked. It is the key to all seeds' heart, the goddess said. It is where our friend now rests. quiet and strained. Yes, this is the memory of my imprisonment. The engraving featured three people. On the right was Anahita in human form. On the left, Farhad's love, Shirin. But who is the man in the middle? Farhad asked. Anahita sighed. My greatest mistake. Farhad staggered as the earth growled and shuddered beneath his feet. The beast, caged for now, was banging on the bars with blows so mighty they crossed realms. We have Bastoon's attention, Anahita said. You must confront it. Uh, I'm not ready, Farhad said. How can I defeat such a creature? Anahita spread a wing. Look around. Look at what you've created. How far you've come. There is greater strength inside you than you care to acknowledge. Fear is inevitable, but you must not let it control you. If you do, then you have already lost. Follow me, Anahita continued. I owe you answers. He is my great mistake, Anahita said. I chose him, and I chose poorly. How does this help me defeat Bistoon? Farhad asked. Anahita sighed. You still have much to learn, human. Patience, for one. Everything has a weakness, 
the goddess said. Humans, Deve, even gods. But before Anahita could say what Bistoon's weakness was, she told Farhad they first had to address his. Guardian Deve, the usurpers of my... Anahita trailed off. Wait, someone is nearby. Farhad blinked. His jaw dropped. He couldn't believe who stood before him. She was more graceful than a swan. More beautiful than a moonlit lake. Farhad knew he should have felt only relief at seeing Shirin safe. But to his great shame, his happiness was tinged with chagrin. He had dreamed of saving her from imprisonment, yet here she stood. How did you escape? Farhad eventually said, his voice trembling. Escape, Shirin said, with furrowed brow. Why would I need to escape my castle? I have been there since you built the milk canal. But... but... you whispered to me, Farhad began. You are not well, Farhad, Shirin said. I have come to plead with you to stop this madness. But Shirin, my love, I do all this for you. Shirin cast down her eyes. I am sorry if I have misled, but... You must know, I do not love you. With those words, the bottom dropped out of Farhad's world. But he had no time to brood. said. She is in grave danger. Forget her harsh words. Prove that you are worthy of her affection. And though Farhad was frightened, his mind racing, he knew what had to be done.
eyes brimming with sorrow. Anahita caught Farhad's despairing stare. Save her, the goddess said. Do not make a mistake as grave as mine. Stand the Deeb's might. For Hod wept, for he had lost another friend to Pistoon. Despite Sheeran's cruel rebuff, For Hod longed to help her, but he could make no sense of her injuries. He gripped all seeds amethystine heart as the drowning man clutches the rope. I failed you, he whispered to the stars. Please. Show me what to do. And then, a memory floated to the surface. A single word. Oblivion. Give up, Farhad pleaded. Stay with me. Farhad cradled her in his arms, as if she were made of porcelain. And he saw something wonderful. The slight rise and fall of her chest. I will take you home, princess, Farhad whispered. The rain ran down his craggy face and rivulets, masking his tears. Perhaps you do not love me, he said, sobbing. But I fought a mountain for you, and I put trusting friends in harm's way. And selfish as it may be, I would do it all again. As for hard walks, Sheeran started murmuring. Farhad leaned close. She whispered but a single word. Kosro. Suddenly, it all made sense to Farhad. The stone carving. The two were the perfect couple. The king of Persia and the princess of Armenia. How could a lowly sculpture question such a union? Suddenly, Farhad ground his teeth as a great fury washed over him. Not at Sheeran, or even Khosrow, but at himself. What was I thinking? How could a princess love someone like me? But it doesn't do to wallow in self-loathing and other questions wormed their way through Farhad's anger. If not Shirin, then who does the Whisper belong to? How could he defeat Bistoon and enter the fortress of Oblivion? Why even try now? Farhad was ashamed by his selfish musings. What happened to Anahita? He thought. Does she need my help? in his wretched thoughts. Farhad nearly failed to notice something alarming. Shirin's dainty feet were turning gray. I can't feel my legs, Shirin mumbled. Shh, be at peace, Farhad reassured her. You will be all right, as Anahita was. Shirin furrowed her brow. Anahita? Farhad swallowed, 
and drew in a deep breath. She was... is your guardian. She risked everything to help me. He trailed off with a hoarse croak. I should check the rift is still sealed, for odd thought, recalling the memory stone. What does the statue hold? Farhad wondered. Greetings, Farhad. My sources tell me you are a man of your word. Perhaps I should be impressed, but reports of your engravings give me cause to question your sanity. I had thought that when Princess Shirin herself revealed that she does not return your love, you would cease your efforts. If you must persist, so be it. I will not stand in your way. Just remember that I require complete, unhindered passage through Mount Bistoon. Only then will I grant you your wish. Know that I have sent my best horsemen to bring the princess home. In the meantime, you are responsible for her safety. Your king, Khosro. Something about Khosro's tone set Farhad on edge. When the riders came, he decided to be absent. Reassure himself. Harm will not befall her. The choice was a difficult one. But Farhad could not abandon his friend. After all, both he and Shirin owed Anahita their lives. And while a broken heart may ache for years, death happens but once. Perhaps Anahita's last temple would suggest her whereabouts. letter was condescending, haughty, oppressive. Shirin would no doubt be safe with the king, but at what cost? <laughs>
course, Khosrow's letter had alluded to something else. An agreement between Farhad and the king. Why does he want passage through Mount Bistoon? Farhad wondered. And what wish does he speak of? Could it be... Shirin? The thought angered Farhad. The princess was not a prize to be awarded. Within Farhad, but resolve overcame both. This time, he knew what had to be done. Visit a strange place often enough, and it soon loses its mystique. But this was the memory stored within all Seed's heart. A story Farhad needed to know. What is this for? Farhad wondered. An iron flowed, hot and angry. Farhad scoured his memories for all seeds' last words. To kill a mountain, build something new. The mountain was clear, but build what? Why would all seeds have a memory of a smithy? Farhad thought. Fire and trees do not usually well mix. The sledgehammer was huge and heavy. 
but Farhad carried it with ease. <laughs> As he rounded the corner in the floating path, a gasp escaped Farhad's lips. Shattered remnants of his friend hung suspended in the air, unmoving, cold, lifeless. Do not ask for whom the bell tolls, Deev, Farhad shouted into the darkness. It tolls for thee!
mighty blow, the Deev's crimson eye. The storm within Farhad's heart rivaled the one that rent the dark skies. Bastoon was defeated, but at such cost, he felt more alone than he For the first time since he awoke on Mount Bistoon, his path was clear, but he had no one to share the news with. Princess Shirin would be resting in Kosro's quarters. Farhad, what have you done? What vile sickness did you expose my love to? You have no reason to dig through the mountain any longer. Princess Shirin is dead. Your king, Kosro. <laughs> For him anything. But death had not ended for Hod's journey before, and it was not about to now. Instead, for Hod drew ever closer to answers. The final steps on the path laid out before him, the path that ended in the realm of forgotten memories. The fortress of oblivion awaited him, and Farhad thought of all those who had played their part in getting him here. All seeds, with his wisdom and kind heart, Majestic Anahita, so dedicated to atoning for her greatest mistake. The beautiful princess, always out of reach. And the king, who treated him with such disdain. But none of them mattered anymore. The whisper called to him. I called to him. Boding chilled for Hod as he walked amongst the horrors. Exiled and forgotten people, ensnared by the blight, trapped in endless suffering, their silent screams frozen in their gullets. Still, I cried out across the realms. Unimaginable agonies racked my body. 
Yet I never sought refuge in insanity. The wound that never heals reminded me of my mortality and my purpose. I looked into Farhad's eyes and saw his pain and confusion. But even then, I saw a flicker of something else. Was it relief? Words eluded him, however. So I explained everything. I told him my name is Nizami. I was a blacksmith by day and a storyteller by night. I was banished by King Khosro, exiled unjustly. On Mount Bistoon, I was mortally wounded, but saved by the most wondrous fruit and guided by a talking tree. Then, I discovered an otherworldly domain, a realm of forgotten souls. But the Deev found me. I was imprisoned in the fortress of oblivion, doomed to be forgotten, teetering on the edge of oblivion. Agony poured from my wound and took form. You, Farhad, are created out of my pain. Out of my wound, I told him. You are the manifestation of hope, the embodiment of purpose. I had lost count of the number of times Farhad had reached my prison, but each time he had refused my plea, refused to set me free. I knew the choice was grim, but I had to prevail. My story is not yet complete, and so I gave him a choice. Liberate me, or abandon me once more. The path to the left was where he should engrave the wise decision to set me free. Or he could add to the cruel records of abandonment to the right. uncertainty was written on his face. So I warned him against abandoning me again. You only prolong the bitter cycle, I told him. You will lose your memories once more. Your destiny is not one of futility and confusion. And I told him that I would keep calling him, and he would come. Is that what you want? I asked. To go through all the heartache you have endured yet again? But I could not force him to see reason. If he would leave me again, I promised to send him away from this place. I would show him how to use the memory stone within his head to leave the fortress of oblivion. But what would he be escaping for? Endless wandering? Repetition without purpose? I groaned, but I knew this was not the end. I will see you again soon. Once again, Farhad refused his destiny and condemned me to further torment. How many times he has failed me, I cannot say. Perhaps neither of us will ever be free. Perhaps the blight will spread unchecked. But my purpose still burns as fiercely as the agony in my chest. And Farhad's story has not yet ended. It cannot end yet. A wave of nausea washed over Farhad. 
He stumbled. Darkness closed in. He staggered on. Before oblivion drew in again. He lost consciousness again and again. Panic streaked through his muddled mind. And then, he remembered my warning. The bitter cycle. With every step, his memory slipped away. I must engrave Nizami, he thought. I must not forget. Farhad sought to immortalize my story in stone. And against all odds, he did it. He looked back at all the engravings he had made and found hope in them. Hope that he could walk a different path. Slowly, like the morning sun clambering over the horizon, consciousness came. He opened his eyes. How pleasant, he thought, to wake to nature's song. As he navigated the narrow path, he breathed in fresh mountain air. It focused his mind. Questions bobbed to the surface, like apples in water. The same questions that he had struggled to answer at the start of the last cycle. But of course, Farhad knew nothing of that. He did not even know his own name, if you recall. I promised there was more to his tale. He sought a way off the mountain, and some buried memory drew him to the tunnel he had excavated. به گفتا دل ز مهرش کی کنی پاک به گفتا نگه که باشم خفته در خاک به گفتا جان مره بس دل که با اوست به گفتا دشمن این هر دو بی دوست به گفتا گر خرامی در سرایش به گفتن دازم این سر زیر پایش به گفتو آن من شد زو مکن یاد به گفتین کی کند بیچاره فرهاد چو آجز گشت خسرو در جوابش نیامد بیش پرسیدم سوابش به یاران گفت کس خاکی و آبی ندیدم کس بدین حاضر جوابی به زر دیدم که با او بر نیایم چه زرش نیز بر سنگ و آسمایم که ما را هست کوهی برگزرگاه که مشکل میتوان کردن به دورا میان کوه راهی کرد باید چنان کامد شد ما را بشاید به کوهی کرد خسرو ره نمونش که خاند هر کس اکنون بی ستونش
And so I gave him a choice. Liberate me, or abandon me once more. The path to the left was where he should engrave the wise decision to set me free. Or he could add to the cruel records of abandonment to the right. This time, I resorted to honesty to convince Farhad to release me. If he rescued this poor old man, his creator from a life of torture, I promised to continue my journey. I would seek out the source of the blight afflicting nature, the reason behind the chaos that sweeps through Persia, and destroy it. But sadly, there was a catch. To leave my unnatural shackles empty would draw unwanted attention. Farhad would have to take my place. At this, the sculptor growled and turned his head. Wait, I implored. You do not understand. I told him how this sacrifice would give his life meaning. After all, it was his purpose. It was what he was created for. The only way he could escape the cycle. And I promised that when my quest was complete, I would come back to return the favor. You have made the right decision. I told him. Before I left, Farhad asked me if his sacrifice would be worth it. There is no greater blessing than having purpose, I told him. No worse pain than having it denied. I promised I would not rest until I had stopped the sickness afflicting nature. I would rescue other poor imprisoned souls and face the threats before me with the courage that Farhad had shown. بیاورد زحاک را چون نبند به کوه دماوند کردش ببند به کوه اندرون تنگ جایش گزید نگه کرد قاری بنش ناپدید بیاورد مسمارهای گران به جایی که مغزش نبودن دران فرو به از دستش بران کوه باز بدان تا بماند به سختی دراز به وستش بران گونه آویخته از او خون دل بر زمین ریخته از اون نام زهاک چون خاک شد جهان از بل او همه پاک شد